Hello everyone. Uh, as I promised, in each homework set that I, I assign weekly, I'm going to try to do one or two of the problems so that you get to see how to do these problems and uh, hopefully uh, you learn enough to be able to do the rest of them on your own. If uh, you have uh, specific issues with any of the problem sets, uh, you can obviously come to the office hours, the Zoom office hours, but also you can send me uh, questions, uh, emailing me, and maybe if I get a, enough of a, a request for a certain homework problem, then I'm going to do it and put it on by. Okay, so this uh, problem that I'm going to do right now is uh, question number 131 in the book that was assigned. And basically, you what you have here is a network of electrical components connected to each other and in the table you have the power calculated for each one of the components and the current that is passing through them uh, and a certain direction for the current is assumed. One thing that I need to mention here is that when the current is positive it means that the polarity shown here is actually the correct polarity of the current or the direction that this current is going but if a current is negative what it means is that the current is moving actually in the other direction. You don't have to change anything. It just a negative current means that in actuality the current is going the other way around. Okay. So that said, the question is asking in uh, part A show that the interconnection satisfies the power check. Okay. So uh, as explained, the power check is basically coming from the uh, the holy rule of the the universe which is the conservation of uh, energy and uh, matter uh, so you just add up all the energy uh, that is uh, in a system all the energy that is generated has to be equal to the all the energy that is consumed um, in other words all the power that is generated is equal to the, all the powers that is consumed uh, the convention that we defined was that when a power is generated uh, we're gonna uh, say it's a negative number and when the power is, a, is consumed it, we're gonna say it's actually a positive number and then when you add them up the total is gonna come down to be uh, zero in other words all the po power generated is gonna be equal to all the power consumed now in this table as you can see a b c e and f have a positive power which means these are the components that are consuming the energy or the power D and G these two are generating power uh, you can tell that from the negative number so if you add up all the power that is generated and I'm gonna do that so let's say um, power that is uh, generated I'm gonna show that with a P of G uh, so it's minus 3020 and minus 660 so these are the power that are generated and that's basically minus 980 the total power generated watts uh, now power consumed I'm going to show that with PC here so it's 175 plus 375 uh, plus 150 uh, plus 160 uh, plus 120 so this is 280 this is 430 so this 3 are 430 these 2 are 550 550 and 430 is 980 so that's 980 watts so there you go uh, PG plus PC the total power I'm gonna call it P total is equal to zero so in this uh, circuit or these numbers for this circuit satisfy the power check and that's a good sign that shows that this could be all all these there's no problem here now that doesn't necessarily guarantee that everything is actually correct 
I have to tell you that uh, because you can manipulate these numbers so that they actually mm, satisfy the power check but they don't necessarily uh, satisfy other checks for the circuit that we uh, in this chapter one we haven't discussed for example Krishhoff uh, current law may not be necessarily satisfied but uh, you can manipulate the numbers so that the uh, power check is uh, satisfied so uh, but that's not the case here this is uh, this is all as, as as much as the question is asking us to do so with this we assume that these calculations has been correct okay so uh, uh, the next so this was Part A. So now Part B. It says identify the elements that absorb power. Uh, now uh, we discussed that elements that absorb power are A. Component A is absorbing or consuming power. B is absorbing power. C is uh, absorbing power. E is absorbing power, and F is absorbing power. Now absorbing power is actually a better uh, terminology used as opposed to consuming power uh, absorbing or receiving that is, doesn't necessarily mean that the power is turning into some other form of energy it just means that the direction that is energy is being transferred is from outside to the component uh, so uh, just keep that in mind these are uh, sometimes used uh, interchangeably like absorbed with consumed Absorbed is a more general term for a positive power, which means the direction of the transfer is from the outside into the component. Now, when an, a power is absorbed, that doesn't necessarily mean it's consumed. Uh, now, consumption means turned into a different form of energy. For example, if, uh, there are components that um, turn the energy that is absorbed to uh, potential energy and they just conserve it conserve it in the form of uh, potential electrical energy capacitor comes to mind uh, if if you want to uh, really know an example we're going to discuss that later on so capacitor doesn't necessarily consume the energy but it's absorbing the energy or conserving it um, just keep that in mind okay so but uh, as opposed to say uh, resistor. Resistor is consuming energy because it's turning the energy into heat, for example. So now, uh, find a voltage chapter, uh, sorry, uh, part C says uh, find a voltage for each of the elements. Now, uh, since we know the power and we know the current, if you look at the polarity uh, of the voltage defined and with how the current is actually going into the component, we can use the equation for the power and uh, calculate the voltage for each one of the uh, components since we have the current. For example, uh, in element A, the current is going into uh, the positive terminal, so the equation for power in that component is basically simply voltage across it times the current that is going into it, so VA IA. No negative because the, the current is actually going into the positive terminal. So positive going, current going into the positive terminal, here is a positive. Current going into negative terminal like this one, for example. The power has negative here. Okay. So, um, uh, so from this, we know the power is 175 for that component. And we know that the current is... 25 so from this now we know VA is equal to 175 divided by 25 and that is hmm, 7 I think yes yes 7 so that's 7 volts okay so what does that mean 7 volt it means that the potential of this node minus the potential of this node is 7. In other words, the potential of this node is 7 volts larger than the potential of the other one. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one, uh, PB. 
the power for component B. Uh, the current, defined current again uh, here is uh, going in to the positive terminal. So that would be VB times IB. The power is given as 375. Uh, the voltage VB times the current 75 and from this VB is 300 sorry I made a mistake here 375 I wrote 357 it's 375 divided by 75 and that's 5 actually so that's 5 volts I guess you can see how this is done by now we're going to keep going P C is equal to now for C as we discussed the current is going into the negative terminal so the way that the power is defined is negative VC times IC and therefore PC uh, is 150 from the table and that's equal to minus VC times now IC is minus 50 so minus 50 and from this VC is equal to minus 150 divided by minus 50 which is actually 3 volts. So what does this tell you? This says uh, that the voltage of this terminal is higher than the voltage of this terminal because this minus that had turned out to be 3 volts. But the current I see is a negative number which means that in actuality the current is actually moving the other way around. It's moving this way. And that's why the power turned out uh, to be positive anyway, right? Uh, because a positive number means that the current means that the pop I mean the component is consuming energy and for a component to consume energy the current has to go into the positive terminal so this direction that is assumed for that current has been in incor uh, incorrect and now with the power uh, turning out to be positive that's automatically corrected uh, so Uh, let's move on to P D now uh, P D the current is moving into the positive terminal so that the way that we're going to define the power is V D times I D and the value is minus 320 and that's equal to V D times ID is 40, therefore V, sorry, VD here. Let me just go back like that. VD times 40, so therefore VD is equal to minus 320 divided by 40 and that's minus 8 volts now what does it mean for the voltage to become a negative number it, this means that this potential minus that potential is actually minus 8 which means this potential is actually lower than that potential so even though that we have defined this as a positive this is telling us that in actuality this potential is higher than that potential so the calculations are going to automatically correct our assumptions if they turn out to be incorrect normally the positive terminal has to have the higher potential and the negative terminal the lower potential but if you assume otherwise the voltage automatically is going to come out to be negative which basically corrects your assumption it just tells you that uh, the positive should have been up here and the negative down here or if you insist on using this just keep in mind that the voltage is a negative number uh, in 
as long as you're consistent you don't have to change anything so so on and so forth so now let's just move down a little bit keep on going uh, PE here uh, for component E the current is going into the negative terminal so again minus VE times ID IE sorry uh, so that's 160 is equal to minus VE times 20 and therefore VE is equal to minus 160 divided by 20 that's minus 8 volts again uh, and P F for F the current is going to the positive terminal VF times IF so 120 is equal to VF times minus 30 and that means VF is equal to 120 divided by minus 30 that's minus 4 volts and uh, finally for G PG is equal to for the component G the current is going into the positive terminal so that would be VG IG and so minus 660 is equal to VG times 55 so VG is equal to minus 660 divided by 55 and that's minus uh, 12 volts if I'm not mistaken great and that concludes our calculations uh, hope this has been uh, helpful thank you very much for your attention